All right, this is basically a response to um, 8RF, some comments he's made, and um, a video by uh, ZZZ33333, whatever. Um, you know, follow the link, whatever, over there. Um, so there's been, there's a few of these people, though. They, um, you know, really want to do the back to nature thing as a as a way of getting off the civilization's crazy train. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I'm, you know, I don't see nature as a, a better model of existence. Nature is crazy, all right? That's a crazy train. Um, animals eating each other, it's a crazy train. Uh, I, got, I, have, I would have no interest in getting on that train. And so, this brings up a question that was brought up in the Stitcam, Stitcam a conversation the other night that uh, caused all the crap because of the asshole. Um, I, I, in that conversation, brought up the thought experiment, you know, posed the question. Uh, if you were, if you had the power, and you were somebody who was standing outside of the planet Earth, and you found the earth and you observed it and you knew some certain things these are just facts for the for the purpose of the equation all right let's say there are there's this planet earth okay and you got all these animals and you know it's a four billion years of evolution you know all the history of it there's no human intelligence just animals okay so the highest mammal is an ape and you also know for a fact that they, that ape will never evolve into anything else. No animal on the planet will ever evolve a civilization or um, gain an intelligence any higher than what exists currently in that great ape. All right, so I pose the question. What would you do? Let's say you had a button in front of you that could just make it go away. Would you press it? Would you be comfortable just walking away and saying, well, that's okay, that's a great system. It's nice that all this, these living things on this crust of this planet are eating each other, and it's nice that they have all these sensibilities and feelings, and that they torture each other and do all this stuff and whatever and whatever, because they have an orgasm once in a while. And they get an erection and they, you know, stuff pops out and they have this wonderful experience and they chase each other and have to, so they can stick their things into each other and have these orgasms and uh, they enjoy eating each other every day because you know it, it feeds the cells of their body and uh, so what so I, that's the thought experiment now I didn't get any answers okay I posed the question and I got no answers all right which we could conclude that, yeah, yeah, it's a kind of a tricky question because you really don't want to put yourself in an idiot box and say, oh, yeah, it's a great system. And at the same time, you can't say, hell, I can't blow it up. It's life, right? Life is great. I mean, that's what we've been taught. That's what we know, right? Life is great. You can't, you know, life is great. You can't kill life. No, that'd be horrible. All right, so now let's change the thought experiment a little bit. And let's say the button doesn't kill anything. It doesn't exterminate anything. It just makes it all sterile, okay? So this generation will be the last generation. And it'll just slowly die out, and all that'll be left was non-feeling organisms. So, and that's how it'll be left. Just nice green trees, and so it'll still be a pretty place from space. There'll still be an atmosphere and all this little fun stuff, and there'll be plants, and, you know, it'll be quiet. You know, just leaves falling, and, and uh, you know, seeds may be flying through the air, you know, on the wind. But that's it, um, you know, no consciousness, no animals eating each other, no footprints. Um, okay, would you press that button to, to re reduce it back to that level? Um, well, anyway, so th this is the, you know, there, there's, we have a built-in, affinity for this thing we are part of it so of course it's it's going to feel natural to us it's going to feel connected to us we're going to feel connected to it we were born of it um, but my question is if we can build ourselves an objective perspective 
can we really honestly say this makes sense? That this is, not even that it makes sense, but that it is serving some purpose that justifies the price in terms of suffering endured. And I know some of you don't take suffering very seriously. It doesn't mean anything to you. I mean, you know, it means something to you personally, but it, it doesn't, um, you don't think it has an echo. You don't think it has a meaning echo. It just is, and then it's over with, and that's it. And so, I don't know, maybe because you think it's part of some kinetic process that it does, it's not additive, that there's, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how much was paid to build the house, if the house exists, the house exists, and it's irrelevant how much was paid to build it, kind of a thing. I mean, I just can't, you know, that's not logic I can really understand. So I, I guess if that's the way you're going to look at it, there's this, this, there's just no point in even asking you the question. But otherwise, people who are just going to try to seriously answer the question, I mean, I want an answer to, to how do you, what exactly do you see in, in the carnivore living environment, minus this intellect, minus Shakespeare, um, that justifies life, that makes it purposeful, meaningful, productive. That's the key word, maybe. What makes it productive enough to justify its existence? Or do you just declare it productive? Because it is. Because nature made it, nature is smart, it's good. Is that, if that's all your equation is, then tell me that's all your equation is. You believe nature has got the stuff, it knows what it's doing, so it's automatically good. And if that, but if you are enlightened enough to know not to fall for that, um, can you give me the answer? And you can, can you explain how I am a crazy person for posing such a question?